All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. And today I want to talk about something really interesting to me and has been for a while. Uh, so, and that is quantum computers and cryptocurrency. So I brought up a couple articles for you guys. And on top of that, uh, a couple YouTube videos. So we'll talk about these and we'll talk about quantum computers and maybe just throw in a little dash of conspiracy in there as well for you. So uh, the first video I have for you guys is Bitcoin and how cryptocurrencies work. It's by SciShow. I'm subscribed to SciShow. It's a great channel overall. And also from Kurzgesagt, if I said that correctly, um, Quantum Computers Explained the Limits of tech Human Technology. Also subscribe to them. Really, really great channel. Every single video they come out is like an instant click for you. Like it's, it's, it's one of those YouTube channels where as soon as you see one of those videos, like you couldn't have possibly clicked faster. Really, really excellent YouTube channel here. So the problem with quantum computers and cryptocurrency. So you have a regular computer today and that operates on electricity and and bits of electricity that go through and it's basically on or off and it does that millions and millions of times a second and you get what you see today you get your monitor you get your apps you get uh processing mathematics that sort of thing quantum computer is a totally different story and uh actually you know what let's go ahead and just bring up quantum computers and see if we can get an image of one because right now they're really huge and bulky. This is an image of a quantum computer. Uh, so there's some quantum bits in there, some quantum material, if you will. Uh, again, the videos are gonna explain this better. I have watched several videos on quantum computers because I'm just fascinated with them. Uh, so they're essentially processing information on individual atoms, and this is exponentially faster than a regular PC can be ever for any reason um no pc will ever be faster than a quantum computer once we actually get them going uh well so this article is basically talking about how bitcoin can be uh imminently destroyed essentially by a uh, quantum computer so if a quantum computer came out immediately what you would be able to do is essentially solve all of the problems of bitcoin and you would essentially um, get every single last Bitcoin pretty much instantly. It would get you all of the Bitcoin. It would, of course, it would require a pretty powerful quantum computer, but uh, either way, I think it says somewhere in here, it has a pretty good uh, mention of, so um, the number of qubits right now, they call them qubits of what you actually process information on on a, on a quantum computer. And right now they're really, really small. I think the most like we've done recently was like uh, three times five or something like that on a quantum computer and it equals 15. Uh, so really, really small things right now. Um, so they recently soared from 16 to 50 qubits, uh, which is far from the 4,000 to 10,000 qubits that would be needed to crack Bitcoin, Bitcoin's cryptography. Um, so not anytime soon. We won't see real quantum computers uh, actually doing work for probably at least 10 years. And it won't actually reach the home where you would be able to buy one for who knows, maybe even 40 or 50 years. One thing that's really interesting is that if a quantum computer is discovered, if a quantum computer has been made, uh, Bitcoin might actually be a pretty good discovery of the quantum computer in the, in that sense. So if, if one was invented and it uh, broke the cryptography of Bitcoin and solved all of the coins, we would know that somebody somewhere in the world has created a quantum computer, which I would really doubt that they would do that because then they would give themselves away. But it just goes to show. Another thing that uh, quantum computers uh, pose a threat towards uh, cryptocurrency is your personal keys. So if you've ever had a wallet, um, like a personal on your computer wallet, you'll notice that you get a string of, of, of keys to act as a security measure so that when you log into your wallet, you have to put in that whole key. And what it is is a string of about 10 or 12 random words and with a space in between. So to be able to crack that with a regular computer, even a very fast server or mainframe or something, would be virtually impossible. You would have to have the, the, the power of the sun. You'd have to have a computer the size of the sun, and maybe you still wouldn't even uh, crack that code 
just because the computer has to try virtually every single word in the human language and it has to get them it has to get it in the exact order um so you can see how that would be really really impossible just think about the the mega millions or the powerball or your local lottery jackpot and you get uh, usually six numbers uh, ranging from one to 99 and that is like a one in 350 million chance to actually win that so imagine adding like 12 whole words to um to a to a cryptography key <clears throat> So that's two ways that uh, a quantum computer can really break Bitcoin. And so which is really interesting. Um, and so a little bit of the conspiracy aspect of it. So the government, of course, was probably already working on quantum computers. We already see that MIT and some various colleges, um, of course, uh, scientific uh, groups are making these quantum computers. As you can see, they do exist. Uh, usually a lot of these are, are at major universities and whatnot. But if you don't think the government is already working on quantum computers, then um, maybe, I don't know, maybe you're a little naive. I'm not sure. But it just goes to show in, in, in the late 60s, it was said that the NSA was running processors that ran at five or 600 megahertz. And that doesn't sound very fast in today's in today's world. You might have a computer that is running 3.4 or 4.7 gigahertz processor, and not only is it a, is not only is it not a single core processor, it might be an eight or 12 core processor. So they're they're way 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 exponentially faster than they were. But 600 megahertz for the late 60s was unbelievable. Now take this into consideration that you weren't able to actually go out and buy. Uh, maybe a Pentium 2 or a Pentium 3 processor that was five or 600 megahertz till about 1995, 1997. So that means the government was essentially 30 years ahead in terms of their processing power for these coins. Um, so that means in the future, if the government has a quantum computer and they really want to do some damage to, to Bitcoin and get it out of the way, maybe it's, maybe it's threatening fiat. Um, even though I think the government in the future, particularly the United States and other other major governments, uh, I think they'll actually make their own cryptography uh, fiat, and they will issue that. And that way, they're able to control the the blockchain. They're able to control uh, the algorithm. They're able to control uh, the output and, and everything, even more so than they can control fiat today. And Again, that wouldn't surprise me in the least to see a government come out with their own cryptocurrency. I think Venezuela is actually doing it right now. Um, and many other governments to follow because uh, they really want control of their money, obviously, and that's why we have federal reserves and, and central banks, and they're able to control the inflation, deflation, and everything about it, interest rates and whatnot. And with a quant with, with with a cryptocurrency, they could do everything they wanted to do. They could make it exact. They could make um, they could deflate, inflate uh, interest rates, what have you, and they could put it exactly the way they want it. Um, so it really wouldn't surprise me. But if the government really did want to crack down on Bitcoin or Litecoin or all these cryptocurrencies that are coming out, they could use a crypto computer to just sweep it up, cause damage to the system, uh, to the markets, and basically just make everybody flee the crypto world. So crypto computers or quantum computers um, are a real threat to the crypto world. And they're really, really interesting in numerous ways in terms of just processing power, even for not for, for things that aren't cryptocurrency. So I would actually like your guys' opinions. What are your guys' opinions on quantum computers, the crypto world, um, what's gonna come out next and what will happen when a quantum computer does come? Uh, will a new cryptocurrency be created once quantum computers are sort of out there in the world and, and maybe maybe they're really expensive but people can kind of buy them uh, and start making a quantum cryptocurrency that has security measures that would blow Bitcoin out of the water in terms of uh, how much power you would need to, to, to crack the code. So it's a weird, weird world and I just wanted to talk about that for a few minutes and um, just go over some things. So I will put this link here in the description and this link here in the description. And then if you guys want to do some more research on this, it's really easy to just simply Google and find results of quantum computers and cryptocurrency. So SciShow, really good. Uh, Kurzgesat, really good. They also have a ton of other. Really can't recommend this, this channel enough. It's really great. 
But let me hear you guys' opinions on quantum computers and what's going to happen, how long it's going to take for them to come out. Uh, are you guys worried about it at all? And it might be sort of a thing where, hey, it's 40 years from now. Why worry about it now when I can just wait 40 years and worry about it later? Is, is this a big problem? Um, let me hear your guys' opinions. Put them down in the comments down below. As usual, I'll see you guys next time.